Hi everyone, it's me again, Nicola, English woman abroad in Morocco. Got a new Jalaba on today. I hope you like it. Um, watch the next video, you might see me shopping for some more. But in the meantime, this is my cooking Jalaba. So you may have noticed the tagine by the side of me here. So I promised you a while ago that I was going to cook you a tagine. Today is the day. So here we have a traditional Moroccan tagine. Um, if you're going to buy one to use for cooking, you need to have one with a metal strip. And remember, there are some decorative tagine that you can't use for cooking. So be careful if you're going to buy one that you buy something you can actually use to cook with. So I'm sure you've all seen one before, but it has this distinctive conical shaped lid which sits on top of this dish here. Tagine is the name of the dish and tagine is the name of what you cook inside it. So let's move on to the ingredients for today's tagine. Thanks to everybody who put forward their suggestions. I gave you the choice, chicken, meat or fish and chicken was the most popular. I'm glad about that because chicken's my favorite too. And this, for those of you that have watched the video will know, is day 10 of the Ramadan challenge and I'm fasting today. So it's really difficult for me to be standing here in front of all this food cooking you a tagine, but I am gonna eat it later, so it's okay. Right, here we go with the ingredients, okay? So come over here. We have everything we need laid out because that makes it much easier because there's quite a lot of different things that go into this tagine. So over here, we start with a mixture of olive oil and vegetable oil. So there's about half a cup there and it's about a half and half mixture. Then we have some chopped onions that, that will go in next. Then we have, most importantly, the spices. So anything else in these ingredients, you can really make it up. So the vegetables, you can choose vegetables that you like. So if there's anything here that you don't like, just swap it out for something else. But the spices, you need to really use the spices that I'm telling you here today. So it's fundamental with all Moroccan cooking. Spices are really important. So here we have a heaped teaspoon of ginger, half a teaspoon of pepper, a teaspoon of turmeric, a teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of paprika. Okay, that will marinate the chicken in a minute. In this dish here, we have a heaped teaspoon or three cloves of chopped garlic or grated garlic, um, here we have a mixture, probably two dessert spoons or tablespoons of coriander and parsley. Preserved lemon, very important and adds to the flavour. So we have the inside of one preserved lemon. And if you want, you can use a small amount of the peel for decoration at the end. So we'll put that on. I like to put that on at the end. Then we have two carrots chopped into sort of sticks, but, but fairly thick um, so that they don't overcook. We've got another onion here, which is chopped. Then we have a tomato, which is also chopped finely. In the next dish, we have a mixture of peas and beans. Then we have olives. The olives will go in probably about 10 minutes before it's ready, so at the very end almost. Um, and then over here, a splash of water, which we'll add in a moment. And of course, the most important ingredient, the chicken. So again, quantities, you can choose with everything pretty much apart from the spices. The chicken's the same, so this is a whole chicken but it will feed probably about six people. So, you know, if, you, if there's only two of you, you need much less chicken, but I'll leave you to decide for yourselves. Okay, that's all the ingredients. Oh, no, it's not. The potatoes. Again, another important ingredient. Potatoes, we've got 
probably three sort of medium sized potatoes here and sliced like that again so that they don't overcook and that is let's get cooking here's the tagine let's take the top off the tagine get a bit of heat underneath it warm it up a little bit and we'll start by popping half of our um, oil mixture roughly into the tagine maybe a drop more and then that's followed up with your chopped onion so we're going to stick that in there make sure we get all of it in there and we're going to caramelize that for a few moments to give a bit of flavor um, over here we've got the chicken so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop all these spices into the chicken just like that we're going to pop in the garlic the parsley and the coriander I have washed my hands by the way and then we're going to pop in the preserved lemon but not the peel remember because that's for decoration at the end and then I'm going to take my rings off and get my hands in here and just marinate this chicken with this it's nice and dirty I hope I don't get my jalaba dirty there I think that's enough just so you coat all your pieces of chicken however many you have so everything's got some spices on it and in a minute when we stick the chicken in the tagine we'll rinse the bowl out with the water so that we make sure that we get um, all of the spices out of the bowl we don't want to leave any of that flavor in the bowl right I'm just going to rinse my hands and find something to stir these onions with give them a quick stir leave them in there to heat up a bit and uh, cam caramelize so that we can get some nice okay so the onions are going nicely now and we're going to go back to the chicken um, we're just going to add the rest of our oil so we put half the oil in the tagine the other half is going to go on the chicken like that and we'll just give that another little mix round before we put it into the tagine uh, with the onion so you can arrange it how you want to um, obviously if you've got less chicken you'll have a bit more space maybe but you just want to kind of brown this off a little bit before uh, we add everything else So make sure you get all that goodness out of that. In a moment, as I said, we're going to pop that water in here, collect up the rest of these spices, and then pour it over the top when we've put everything else in. So let's just, I've turned the heat down. Um, you might want to do the same with yours. And I'm just going to turn it around to try and brown it off a bit more. Get a bit of heat in there. that I'll turn it again in a minute you can see we've got here look all these juices lovely juices that are left in the bowl and so before we finish um, once I've put all the vegetables in there I'll put a bit of water in there and then we'll tip that over the top so that we don't lose any of that lovely flavor 
I'm going to go back to my chicken now and turn that over again. Oops, let's not lose it on the floor. So that's looking good and it's sizzling away there. I don't know if you can hear that in the background. And in a minute we'll start to uh, put the vegetables in. I'm going to start to add the vegetables now and we start with the carrots. So uh, here we go. Um, and of course what you want is, is a bit of a, similar to this I guess, that, that dome pyramid sort of shape. So try and stand them up and fit them in around the edges like this, pushing them in and uh, getting that pyramid shape. More or less standing up. Now we're going to put the uh, potatoes, so let's just get the potatoes. And we'll start again by putting these around the edge, standing them up as best you can to create that sort of pyramid shape. Well, so now you can see we've got a nice little ring round here of potatoes that are sort of standing up and making that pyramid shape. So next we're going to go with our sliced onion. So remember we had two onions, one we chopped and we've already put in and this onion we're just going to put on the top here. This is the sliced onion. I think maybe I won't use all of those. Just put a few more in. Next comes the chopped tomato. Again, on the top there for decoration. I'll put all these in because they will um, melt down into the sauce at the bottom with the juice as well. And then almost lastly, our peas and uh, broad beans. So there's a mixture of peas and broad beans there. And again, we're just going to pop them on the top. Of course, they're round most peas, so they're going to um, fall down, but mainly on the top. Oops, there's a couple on the floor. Let's put a few down this side as well. Okay, so the last thing we need to do, as I said, we're going to use the water and we're just going to tip that in the bowl where we had all our spices and chicken um, and oil. And we're just going to swirl that around, pick up all the last of those spices and um, coriander and the oil. And then we're going to just tip that over the top, like that. Just scrape that all out. Make sure we get everything out of the bowl. And that puts a bit of liquid um, into the tagine as well. So it's ready now for us to put the lid on. So pop the lid on carefully. And that will take, this sort of size, will take about 45 minutes to maybe one hour, um, depending on what you've got in there, how much chicken you've got in there, and what sort of heat you've got. So you want a low heat, um, and what you need is to put a drop more water. So you need to check it and make sure that it's got fluid in there, otherwise it'll burn on the, on the bottom. So just lift it up, have a look, pop a drop more water in if you need to. And within, as I say, 45 minutes to an hour, you'll have a beautiful Moroccan tajin. So I'm just gonna take the lid off and I'm just gonna pop a couple of slices of my preserved lemon peel on the top, make it look beautiful. Let's have three for luck there just like that um, of course you can leave that off if you want to and don't forget 10 minutes before it's ready you want to put your olives in the tagine if you like them okay let's pop the lid back on you'll notice as well it's got a little steam hole here it is quite small so um, in order to stop the sauce from spilling over 
what you can do is just slightly lift the lid and put your spoon in like that. It just allows a bit more steam to come out from the bottom and it stops the sauce from of making sure that their tagine doesn't spill over. So that's where I've learned from, Moroccan locals. Um, I'm not a professional chef. I hope you've enjoyed this. I've got one last tip for you. So I mentioned earlier about the water. You need to make sure you top it up with water. What you can do is pop a bit of water in the top here. So this is another traditional Moroccan thing, so I've been told. Um, and as long as there's water in the top, there is also water in the bottom. So you only need to worry about topping it up once the water in the top disappears or evaporates. So that's my top Moroccan tip when you're cooking your tagine at home. Um, that's it from me, Chef Nicola. I will see you next time. We have to eat the tagine. Here's the finished tagine. We're just going to take it downstairs because it's for tour time, time to eat. So I'm not going to stay much longer. But Slammer, subscribe to the channel. Let me know how you get on if you cook it yourself. I'd love to see pictures. And I will see you next time. Bye.